uh, afternoon session. So I'm Jamarco Hineze and I'll be chairing the session, which is about uh, machine learning. So we have uh, 15 minutes introduction, in which I will give about the topics that will be covered in this uh, uh, session. So as we have seen in the previous talks, there's a number of uh, computed materials database properties that have become available online. So we've already seen a few talks about uh, uh, A-Flow, QMD, Nomad, the materials cloud, we haven't seen the materials project yet, but there's going to be a talk related to that this afternoon. And then, it, you know, one has to realize that when you have to compute um, materials property, the time that it takes, the time that it takes, sorry, the, 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 the video didn't change compared to my screen. So the time that it takes to compute different properties can be quite different. When you compute the structure, properties related to chemistry or to the electronic structure that's rather small compared to the time that is needed to say compute the elastic properties of a system or the piezoelectric properties of a system and so it's not surprising that when you look into the databases that i was mentioning before most of the uh, information that has been computed is related precisely to those properties that are easy to compute because it takes a huge amount of CPU hours to compute properties anyway. And so those that are more complicated have a limited amount of data. And so this is where um, machine learning can really become important because it can help for those properties that have not been computed in a large amount to train the machine learning model. And that gets some idea of uh, the, you know, an idea of the range that the property can, can get for some materials, and then maybe do an actual calculation that is long, but you can afford it when it's for a limited number of materials. And so we have seen that material science is actually witnessing a shift to the so-called false paradigm. So we had the first three, which are empirical science, theoretical science, and computational science, and now we're moving to this big, and the big is between parentheses, because we know that indeed, there are cases in which there is a limited amount of data, so big data-driven science. And so this can be seen if you look at the number of publication that is growing uh, uh, almost exponentially. So you can see that now. And so um, what we are going to have here this afternoon is discussing about that. And so what is nice uh, about the fact that the field is growing is that you can find plenty of uh, review articles. If you're new to the field, you can go through, uh, you know, just search or review about machine learning and material science, and we will find really plenty, plenty of those. There is a huge number of those. Okay, so in all the cases, what machine learning will be used for is this idea of going from the processing condition that I use to uh, synthesize the material, then the structure that material, that this materials get, then move from the structures to the properties, and finally uh, get the performance of the material. So the first step that, yeah, sorry, this relationship is uh, a, a relationship of cause and effect. The process induces a given structure, the structure induces the properties and the properties induce the performance. And so the materials informatics can generate such forward model that can allow you to predict, for instance, the property as a function of the processing condition, the composition and the structure. That's an example. But what we are interested in also is to go the other way around is, let's say that I want to achieve a given performance. What is the processing? What are the structures that I want to get? What are the properties that I need to have in order to achieve that performance? So, so that's this inverse relation, which is called the inverse design, because we want, for instance, to maximize a property such that uh, it, it meets my requirement for the application that I have in mind. In all the cases, when you do these kind of things, the first part is to featureize the data. And so that's a really a crucial point. So for instance, if I take the example of going from the structure to the property, I want to convert my crystal or my molecule into a bunch of number that describe the structure. This is a vector of number that basically uh, describe this, uh, the, this structure. And so this afternoon, we're gonna have a, a number of different uh, such featureization process that will be used. So in the talk of Elias Vlik, I saw that he was using a deep chem, which is a, a, a repository where different ways to transform a molecule into a number of descriptors are used. We're going to have a talk by uh, Anubhav Jaini, which will use uh, MetMiner, which is also another repository where that generates a bunch of features based on the uh, crystal structure. We're going to see that 
in the talk of uh, Yusung Jun, so the first speaker, that uh, uses invertible image-based featureization because it is clear that the field of machine learning developed quite a lot in the field of images. And so there's a lot of featureization that has already, already been achieved and studied different methods as far as images are concerned. In the talks of yesterday, we've heard about SOAP, ACE, and there are many more that I'm not able to cite now. So in this afternoon session, so we will first have uh, uh, several talks that will deal with this uh, forward relationship that goes from the cause to the effect. And with the first uh, talk by, uh, it's actually not the first talk of this afternoon because of uh, the time schedule. Uh, so the first talk uh, by Elias Vlik is gonna be about uh, the, yeah, he's coming from the Routbout University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And so he's gonna speak about how artificial networks can be used to make predictions about co-crystals. So the idea is that you have two molecules and you see whether or not they can form a, a co-crystal together. So we'll hear, learn about uh, much, uh, much more about that in his talk. Then there's gonna be a talk by Asaf Anderson uh, from Tel Aviv, Israel. So he's from a private company in Material Zone. And because it's a private company, actually, I was not able to find exactly the kind of methods that they are using. So I'm not able to, you know, to <laughs> identify which of the methods they are using. And so I guess that we'll learn much more from that uh, from uh, Asaf. Then in the talk of Anubhav, uh, he's going to be presenting something about benchmarking the different models that have been uh, defined. Because, you know, there are different models that are available from machine learning, and they've uh, developed a workbench where you can test the new methods that you develop and see how they perform compared to uh, previous methods. And then finally, sorry, the uh, last talk is going to be about the inverse design thing. So that's, uh, you know, developing a material that is such that it will have a targeted performance. So that's the performance that guides the whole chain of processing structures and properties. So that's something that is called inverse design and that will be covered in the talk of uh, Yusung Jun from the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. And so it will show us how they handle that. Among other things, what they have to define is to have something that is called an autoencoder and that allows to define a latent space. And just to give you an example of what can be done with that, maybe some of you have seen that again, coming to images, which is the field in which the machine learning has developed quite a lot. So what they've been able to do there is to define the latent space that allows them to identify, in the case of uh, um, faces, to identify the region where the pictures look like much more to women, a woman, sorry, than to a man. And as a result, you can take one existing picture and push it in the direction of making it more women-like or more men-like. And so this is something that if we could do something like that with materials, we would be able to define, say, for instance, a direction in which a material becomes more conducting or less conducting, uh, material becomes more transparent, less transparent, stuff like that. And that's, so this is really something that we should try to aim at. I know that is something difficult, but I hope that we will hear about that in the talk uh, by Yuzung Jun. And so with that, I have finished my presentation, and as usual, I was quite fast in doing that. So I don't know if there are questions about my introduction. Otherwise, we can start a bit earlier with the, the, the first talk. I don't know if Yusung is uh, here already.